Today I'm inside a Kia EV9 and we're going to see exactly how fast this vehicle will charge at a Tesla Magic Dock. This is important because the J3400 connector, also known as NACS, also known as the Tesla connector, is now de facto the North American standard going forward. Pretty much everybody has adopted it. But there are some important things you should know. The Tesla supercharger network as we know today is primarily a 400 volt nominal charging network. Yeah, it charges over 500 volts, but everybody calls it 400 volts. Just like this Kia EV9 is an 800 volt EV, but nominally it's just under 600 volts. There is a problem though, because superchargers don't put out the voltage this pack requires to charge natively. So this vehicle has an onboard DC-DC converter circuit. It actually innovatively uses a coil in the rear electric motor as the inductor in that circuit. I'll let you Google that. But the key thing to know is it's not going to charge as fast as a supercharger station as it will at Electrify America, assuming the EA station works, of course. So let's find out exactly how fast this charges at the Tesla supercharger station and everything else you might need to know. One critical thing to know is that not all supercharger stations support the Magic Dock at this time. So what you have to do is use the Tesla app to find a compatible supercharger station. You can see that this one in Scotts Valley is available. And uh, I can then click on that one and choose charge here once you've signed up with your account, etc. You then pick your stall number and then plug in and start charging. Uh, but there is another thing to know. And that is that the charge door in the EV9 is not in the same location as Tesla's. So you may end up actually occupying two stalls and upsetting people, or you're going to have to find a place where you can actually park off to the side right like this one. So let's just walk over and get this connected. This is stall 4D. So we just go to the app here and we choose stall 4D. Go ahead and click that option. Click the unlock adapter option. It's now unlatched or should be unlatched here. Here we go. Yep, unlatched. Oops, got to pull the door down there. And then we plug in and we are magic docked. Then we have to wait until everything syncs up. Of course, you can look at that status on the app there and then see what the vehicle thinks is going on on the inside. And uh, yep, it has synced up. So the power is now ramping up. It's going to take a little bit for the app to uh, recognize that. But uh, you'll notice over here right now it says an hour 32 minutes. That's of course because it doesn't know how fast it's ultimately going to go, but also because this is a slower charger and it's set to go all the way to 80%. So the EV9 does give you 57 minutes to 80 and then that to 100%. It took longer than I had expected for power to ramp up, but you can see it's holding pretty steady there at 84 kilowatts. You should know that that is less than half of what you'd get at a high powered EA station. And that's due to that power conversion circuitry in the back. Also worth noting, Tesla stations are not listed by the factory nav, so you either have to know about them or you have to use the Tesla app. We don't know whether future software updates will be able to increase this number, but I suspect 84 kilowatts is pretty much going to be the peak. Because again, it's using that coil from the rear electric motor. 84 kilowatts of power conversion is actually quite a lot. And there have been some software limitations in the past by Tesla stations because of the nature of the conversion circuitry on board modern Kia and Hyundai EVs. So that has limited the power output and we don't have any official confirmation as to whether 84 kilowatts is the new limit or whether that's just the maximum this vehicle could do. Theoretically, this should be able to do about 100 kilowatts, although I cannot get anybody at Hyundai or Kia to officially confirm that. They've been pretty cagey on the totals. The battery just hit 71%. As you can see, the power output is still holding steady at 84 kilowatts. So it is definitely a good thing that this particular Kia has the extending ottoman there. It has the massage controls over there on the door, uh, but it doesn't have any games or anything like that to play on that center console because you could end up at the supercharger station for some time. And there we have it. We just hit 80% there. It has taken almost an hour, so it would have taken less than half this long to actually go to an EA station or something else. Definitely something to keep in mind if you are really hoping for that next level in NACS transition. And if you did plan on using Tesla superchargers with your EV9 or honestly other high voltage EVs, because other EVs may have similar issues to this depending on their exact architecture. So uh, we're just going to go in here and we are going to hit the stop charging button. This charge did cost us $35 there, as you can see. All we have left to do is to unlatch and then redock the magic dock.